despite the arsenal of guns, a stockpile of bombs, and a well-honed plan to use them against politicians, there were no crimes, according to a jury that was fully unconvinced in the cases against two militiamen and unimpressed with the charges against the accused ringleaders. Tonight, an attorney for one of the men who was acquitted says the governor was never in any danger. As Governor Gretchen Whitmer and her family relaxed, authorities say the militia plan was to blow up a bridge outside her northern Michigan vacation home, attack first responders, and kill her security detail, then kidnap Whitmer and put her on public trial, answering for the COVID-19 restrictions they opposed. Then, according to the FBI, Whitmer and maybe other state officials would be executed on live TV. Investigators said the reconnaissance was done, the assault rehearsed, and the commando plan ready to go. But after five weeks in court, the jury didn't buy it. With two defendants, Daniel Harris and Brandon Caserta, jurors apparently believed defense positions that it was just Rambo ramblings. And with the other two accused ringleaders, Adam Fox and Barry Croft Jr., they just couldn't all agree on guilt or innocence. You have the First Amendment principle that people are free to say awful things and to fantasize about doing terrible things without actually taking a concrete step toward doing it. Tonight, former federal prosecutor Gil Sofer, ABC7's legal analyst, says the jury may also have been troubled by a popular FBI tactic, the use of undercover operatives who penetrated the militia ranks. Jurors are always a little suspicious of an aggressive sting operation. The government typically can overcome that suspicion by establishing that these defendants were predisposed to commit a crime, always intended to, and that their will wasn't overborne by the government. In this case, you have a couple of guys who the defense, I think, persuasively made the case that they were stoners, they were losers, they were dupes, they were mopes. And in that kind of case, the jury's likelier to find that the FBI overreached and it was too aggressive a sting operation. With guns, bombs, and a jury finding no crimes, prosecutors will now try to prevent this same outcome when they retry two of the men. Typically, that will be a streamlined presentation. Authorities will try to interview jurors to see what didn't play well. And tonight, eight others allegedly involved still face state charges. But as the governor's office there says tonight, without accountability, extremists will be emboldened. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.